How much does it cost to live in Los Angeles? This is a question that I constantly get asked on YouTube and especially in my Instagram DMs. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you what my expenses are and hopefully you'll be able to take this video into account and see if moving to Los Angeles would be the best option for you, all right? Uh, so let's go ahead and start off. I have actually all my expenses written down in a spreadsheet and I do recommend that you do this no matter where you live. It's always a great idea to write down your income, write down uh, your expenses and literally put it into like a Google sheet or in a, in a Excel spreadsheet because this is how you're gonna really understand where your money is going and where your money is coming from. All right, so a lot of numbers here. Let's go ahead and start off with my reoccurring expenses. Now, I recently um, bought a townhome, so that's where I currently live, but before that I was living in an apartment with my best friend who was also my roommate. And if you're moving to LA, I strongly recommend renting first, uh, preferably with a roommate because you're gonna be saving a lot of money. So the typical single bedroom apartment in Los Angeles is gonna cost you about 1,800 to 2,000 a month. And a two bedroom, two bath apartment, a luxurious apartment, that's what I consider it, is gonna be anywhere from 26 to 2,800 a month. And trust me, you want to get these slightly nicer apartments because there's a lot of amenities that actually will save you money in the long run, such as a gym, a spa, a pool, all these amenities have really nice features. So that's something I would rather spend a little bit more money on because long-term you will be saving money. So I was spending on my apartment with my roommate 2,800 a month. We split the rent down the middle and that was 1,400 a month each, plus water, which was about $50 a month. And then we also had uh, a gas bill, which was about 25 to 30 a month. And we split that in half. So that's the rent part. Um, if you are deciding to buy something, like my town home uh, is actually, the mortgage is very close to what I was paying for, what we were both paying for rent. So I'm gonna talk to you about my current expenses. Uh, so my mortgage right now is about $28.90 a month, plus an HOA of about $425. So we're looking at, you know, 3315 just for mortgage and HOA. So that's gonna be a reoccurring monthly expense. So 3315 for the mortgage and the HOA. Um, next, another reoccurring expense is groceries. And this is gonna be about 400 a month. Um, you know, groceries have recently increased in price because of COVID and shortages. So I did have to update my numbers in 2020. So 400 a month for that. And sometimes it's actually 360 a month. So between 360 and 400 a month. Another reoccurring expense is my car payment, which is about $505 a month. Uh, this obviously can be a lot lower depending on the car that you drive. And if you own your car, you don't have to worry about this payment at all. So yeah, a car payment can really make or break the bank. So uh, be cautious of that. Make sure you make the right purchasing decisions um, when you are you know, leasing or buying a car. Utilities. So uh, by utilities, I mainly am talking about electricity right now and electricity you know, it depends on the season, but I averaged it out and I spend about $100 a month on electricity. All right, so that's a pretty simple expense, reoccurring. Next on the list for reoccurring expenses is entertainment, and that I put $200 a month. Now, this is actually not that much. You know, this is including eating out, going to the movies. A lot of the times I actually do spend a lot more than $200 a month, and that's why I also include what is called a buffer. And we're gonna be talking about in just a little bit. It's kind of like a safety net for your expenses. Next is my cell phone bill. And cell phone bills are ridiculously expensive. Ridiculously expensive. And I think it's, you know, throughout the United States. You know, I have Verizon. And if you have a best friend or family member who is down to go in on a family plan with you, you are going to be saving at least 30 to 40 bucks a month. So that's what I did with my brother. We both have a family plan and I'm paying about $58 a month for my cell phone with unlimited data with Verizon. You are saving a ton of money. Without 
a family plan, I would be paying about $100 a month. So uh, yeah, really look into the family plan. Next is TV and internet. I don't have cable. I think cable is a thing of the past. If you are paying for cable, ditch it and just use internet TV. But on average, I am spending about $60 a month for internet and TV. Fitness and sports, which is also the gym. I'm paying $45 a month. I'm going to 24 hour fitness. I feel like this is the best deal because with 24 hour fitness, you can access any gym within the United States. And when I start traveling again throughout the US, uh, it's a really nice feature to just go to any gym I want, no matter where I am. So that's a really good feature there. And in the long run, compared to like other gyms like Equinox, which is like $300 a month, you're really saving a lot of money by going to 24 hour instead. So $45 a month, pretty decent right there. Next is savings. This is definitely gonna have to be a part of your expenses because you're gonna have to allocate a certain amount of money every single month towards you know, you know uh, an emergency fund towards your retirement. So this is different depending on the person, but what I have done for myself is that I actually invested a certain amount of money and I'm collecting interest on that. And that is what I'm using towards my savings. I would try to allocate between two to $300 a month minimum for your savings. So plug that into your own equation. The more, the better, but two to $300 a month is a good start. And if you can invest that money that has some sort of uh, you know, really good return. Uh, don't invest all of it, maybe invest about a third into something like an investment, uh, real estate, crypto, whatever, uh, just so you can be earning a little bit, you know, something extra. And if you can get interest on top of that, oh, that's great. Okay, so that's savings. Taxes. <laughs> Taxes, I don't know, you know, it, it's completely different every single year. I won't know until I see my tax person or my accountant. Um, but don't forget that if you're running a business, uh, I do suggest that you get your own accountant because they usually know tax a lot better than you or TurboTax. They can really help you out, uh, you know, with your taxes. For example, a lot of my expenses can be written off as a business expense, you know, camera equipment, this and that travel expenses. So uh, it's important to, you know, see an accountant. So for this video, we're not going to really talk about taxes. Um, last year, I did have to owe taxes, uh, but I won't disclose that in this video. Next is gas. I am slowly eking my way towards electric vehicles because again, that's going to be saving you money long term. Gas is really expensive in California. It's almost $5 a gallon here. I'll actually post uh, the, the numbers right now currently for gas prices and my car takes premium gas which kind of sucks, it gets really expensive. So I try not to fill up more than twice a month and that averages at about 150 to 160 a month for gas for my car. Uh, next is car insurance. Car insurance is expensive. Uh, when I switch to electric, uh, my car insurance will be dropping, but it's about uh, $300 a month. Uh, I usually pay every six months. Uh, you save a little bit more money that way, but $300 a month is what goes towards car insurance. Uh, next is, oh, my favorite, health insurance. And this is about $200 a month. Uh, along with health insurance, I also have dental insurance. I strongly recommend you get dental insurance. I'm paying $16 a month for that. And that includes four dental visits and checkups a year, which I think is a great deal. It's better than paying $100 a visit. Uh, you do save money long term. And then we have uh, non reoccurring expenses such as uh, car registration, you know, equipment and travels. Well, car registration is um, reoccurring, but it's annual. And my car registration, again, this depends on the car that you're getting, is about uh, $400 a year. Uh, not all states, you know, have such high car registration costs, but in California, it is pretty high. Uh, so, yeah, that's my take on that. My advice to you is to invest in like an e-bike or something like that uh, because there's a lot of private bike paths here that you can take that are very safe. For example, I live about 
25 to 30 miles away from uh, downtown LA, but I could literally hop on a bike and take what is called the Orange Line bike path and ride all the way down to downtown LA if I wanted to. Yeah, it's gonna take you longer, but you have to understand that there's also a lot of traffic here. So I think it's gonna take you maybe half an hour to an hour more if you ride your bike rather than drive, but you're gonna be saving on car registration, car insurance, gas for your car, and your monthly car payments. So those are like four really big things that you'd be saving money on if you don't have a car. Obviously there's big perks to having a car, but honestly, if you don't need to drive a lot, especially these last two years with you know the lockdowns and everything, I really haven't needed to use my car that much. Uh, you could always also just Uber. That's also an option for you as well. So uh, total expenses right here that I'm looking at is about 53.24 a month. Okay, I think that if you make a smarter buying decision when it comes down to the car that you're driving, you could probably knock out two to three hundred dollars a month and you could be paying around five thousand a month. And if you're smart about this and you want to rent with a roommate, you can knock out about another fifteen hundred dollars a month and that will be about thirty five hundred dollars a month in expenses. So, you know, just to be extra safe, you know, we're going to talk about the buffer. I like to put in a 15 to 20% buffer just in case one month you have a sudden expense uh, and then the next month, you know, it goes back to normal. So to be safe, I would say um, 43, $4,200 a month uh, would be your typical expenses living here in Los Angeles. Rent prices are increasing, so if you can, save up a little bit of extra money and try to buy a place, buy a condo, buy a townhouse. Long term, you're gonna be saving money and you're gonna be owning. And that is really valuable for Californians. It's very valuable for anywhere where you live. Uh, real estate is only gonna go up. It's rarely gonna go down. So if you can, try to focus on buying. Um, you can do a 5% down payment on a home in California, no problem. And uh, yeah, I would just say uh, focus on that if you can. If you need to rent, then rent, no pressure. But yeah, I would say about $4,200, $4,300 a month is where your typical expenses every month would be. And if you are thinking about moving to Los Angeles, you gotta do it very smartly, very smart. <laughs> My suggestion is for you to save up at least six months worth of expenses before you move over here. Because if you move to LA and you don't find a job, you need to have a couple months at least worth of you know money for you to spend. Six months should be plenty of time for you to find some sort of work. And you know, that would equate to about $25,000, $26,000 for you to have in your savings for you to move over to LA. Don't just hop in your car without any money in the bank and drive to LA. It's very bad to do that because you're just not gonna have a safety net. You should always have a safety net. You don't wanna be going to sleep every night thinking about, oh my gosh, I don't have any money in the bank. I'm stressing out, I'm sweating bullets. It's not worth it, guys. Do this the right way, do this the smart way. Have money saved up for six months of spending here in Los Angeles. And if you move here to LA and find a job within one month, guess what? You're gonna have a ton of money in the bank that you can use for something else. So be wise about this, be smart about this. If you have any questions, please let me know in the DMs on my Instagram, momentum underscore productions. I usually reply the same day. And comment below if you have any questions as well because I think that all of us should have the right opportunities and if your dream is to live and be in LA and work in LA, then you should definitely pursue it. But do it the right and smart way. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Peace.